Hello everyone, I'm Port Scientist 7 and welcome to another Polycore video. Um, another week in Destiny 2, it's week number 6. So we're going to do what, Path of the Spicer number 6. Uh, I like to thank everyone who has viewed the video so far and who've left likes and comments and even dislikes. And I do would like... If, if you leave a dislike on the video, I'm not complaining or anything, I would like you to leave a comment and tell me what I can improve on these videos. Now, I do want to stress one thing real quick. Uh, the videos for this are based on the story. This is not a guide or anything. It's just um, showing you the story content relating to the weekly Path of the Spicer um, questline. That's kind of what I wanted to clarify at the beginning of this video. So, uh, let's head right into it and head off to the helm see the uh, what's it called the splicer servitor that's down at the listening part of the helm I've been enjoying the story so far and today's story I hope everyone enjoys as well I see this is what I've been trying to do is have people enjoy the story of the game well, that's why there is some skips to some of the gameplay and stuff like that in the video so we're gonna all um, head off to the left over here and head on to the Splice of Servitor, and we're gonna listen to Mithrax dialogue at the beginning. And I'll be a little bit more talkative. I did keep the expunge mission this time, so the video will be longer. You can skip it if you want. All right, and after this dialogue, uh, pick up your quest step, and what you have to go do is, well, if you already got the ether key inputted like I do, just go on ahead and get into the override mission. Once you get into the override mission, it's Tangled Sword with this week, so you got the big old Hydra Servitor. Just get up to the boss and um, kill the boss and get to that conflux chest right at the end. So we're gonna just get watch right here, kill the boss. And voila. So once you kill the boss, just head over there, pick up both your chests. You got the normal Vex chest and then the Conflux chest off to the right. Alright, this time around, I actually did not listen to the dialogue because they play a lot of the same dialogue each week. But the dialogue this time was a bit different, so I do apologize for skipping through that part. So, in the next section here, I'm just getting my armor ready. Um, 
so this next uh, expunge mission is actually a bit different. So as you saw, it's called Corrupted. And it's actually a very interesting mission they had this time. Uh, we'll see. They There's a lot of taken elements throughout the running portion. There's actually a lot less enemies this time, which I prefer. Um, and honestly, it's a bit easier to run through this go around. Don't know why. I guess it's because of less enemies. Proceed through the temporal breachway and infiltrate the Vex's subnetwork. Focus on the task at hand. Do not be distracted by your senses. Alright, so we're gonna head right in here and we're gonna do a little shortcut. I was actually seeing how fast I can complete the corrupted version. I got it within 12 minutes, which is uh, how long you can actually, if you don't want to watch through the um, the corrupted version of the expunge for Labyrinth, then you can skip it. It is a 12 minute run. Almost got that uh, below 10 minutes. I just died a few times, which you can watch here. It's hilarious. Today's video is a bit longer, and I bet some people are like, oh, we're just looking for the story. That's Sorry about that, but I thought, you know what? I'm going to show this mission. I honestly, the original expunge missions, they were just, they're easy to get through. But I thought this was interesting because it's corrupted. And as I say corrupted, you'll see in a second, everyone should know that corruption is only caused by, what is that? The Taken. See? <laughs> so. Yeah, looks like the uh, Vex have been corrupted by the Taken. Now, what could this remind us of? Ah, if you look back on the very first week's uh, video, you'll actually see a giant Taken-ish Hydra. So, that's clearly the Hydra who has been manipulated. Well, because they're Taken. And watch this. I'm a goof. Couldn't clamber. Couldn't clamber on that ledge. Alright, so. Yeah, Taken. Uh, Hydra. Uh, the Endless Night of the City. I don't. I still don't. I'm not sure what they're trying to do with that. But clearly the Hydra has stepped up their game. The missions, after we beat them the first time, have become corrupted. So I'm betting in the next two weeks, the other two expunged missions will also become corrupted. Which those are select, you can select whether you do it the original expunge or you can do it this version of the expunge. Cor corrupted or non corrupted. Still don't know if the right or left pass is the shortest. Next time I should take the right. I've always taken middle and left. I don't know why I'm taking. I haven't taken the right yet. Yeah, so just jump through the hoops, jump through the ledges, slide off of them, make sure you land on them. Cause I do. I missed three times, which probably cost me about a few minutes in this whole thing. So I'm probably gonna run this again, see if I can get that. I don't actually know if this would count. Hmm. I do like that there's less enemies though. Yeah, really watch out for those um, taken wells that blast out from the sides. Now, don't make the mistake I did here and not shoot that little crystal off to the right. Because I didn't. I thought I could make it because of my stompy ease and the sword. Nope. Hunters just can't get that uh, reach on their drum, can't they? So, just spawn back. Kill the enemy right here so they don't get in your way. Head on across. Now, once you get through this first um, platform, you can just jump straight in over if you already have that little platform made. If not, go on the other one. You'll die.
fact that I didn't die from a lot of those uh, little blight explosions is actually a surprise to myself. that one up right there. I honestly would just ignore the um, unstoppable. There's no point in actually fighting him. It's just easier to run through it. And, don't, and shoot that crystal next time. I thought I could get it like midair. And I thought I had an extra jump still. Did not. If I had an extra jump, that would have been great. I would have made it first time. Would have saved some time from that too. But unfortunately, I goofed. Fell off into the abyss. <laughs> My time is actually not that bad. I could go a little bit faster. I need to, I'm trying to run it. I've only ran the normal expunge mission like three times. Well, this one I've run uh, just the once, this version of it. And right here, I end up getting lost. Do not just walk towards the wall like I did. I thought there was a path this way. There wasn't. It was right off behind me. basically at the mission now or the boss fight area that was actually and you know what honestly just observing this I mean like that was a quick mission <laughs> that was much faster than my very first attempt in this and with the unlock for the boss uh, those key cipher things the security um, like those, ca um, those cannon Send you off off the side instead of having to on platforms to deliver the data spike. It was far easier to um, what's it called? Uh, bank these uh, data. I can't remember the names of these. The data uh, spikes. There you go. See, look at that. I'm rambling on here and I don't even know what the name of these items. I believe it's data spikes and whatever. And then you just jump down here. Cross. Get the next one. Surprisingly, I will say this. The sword is actually not the most effective weapon against the boss in this fight. It is good for taking out the adds, especially um, the shielded centurions. But it actually more useful against the boss. Uh, not the boss. I mean, the shotgun is more useful against the boss. And I'm using the uh, Iron Banner shotgun that came out this uh, season. Which I, the first one I got, had like, what, what's it called? Killing Wind and I think Opening Shot on it. It's actually a pretty good shotgun. Uh, probably the only one I've been running. I actually meant to turn in my tokens the previous week to see if I can get a new roll. 
that I have. Well, actually, what I have is Killing Wind and Eye of the Storm on that one. It's actually a pretty good shotgun. It works really well in PvP. I recommend the next time Iron Banner come around, guys, uh, you do get this Iron Banner shotgun. It's definitely worth having in your arsenal. Let's get right across here. Now, I would usually use like a, a different heavy, like Deathbringer, but the sword helps take out the ads a bit easier instead of actually doing boss damage. Total, you have to what, bank these things three times. What's odd is I thought the uh, the intervals between the health was every like third. It definitely was not every third. And the ads in this one are far more, I would say, persistent than the Harvey shooting at you in the normal one. So I recommend you clear out those ads pretty quickly too, if you have a good ad clearing super, if it's not used for the boss damage. Or just throw some uh, clever grenades in the right spot to take them out. I probably would have um, cleared this a bit faster. If I didn't, um, what's it called? Use tether, but it honestly helps a lot with those ads. In the bomb site. You, know, you see right here, I'm almost dead twice. And thank goodness we're in this. recommend doing that one first in my opinion and the reason why honestly the heartbeats always move but it's just you immediately face to face with that heartbeat and you can just you know, take them out instantly but doing the left one right here first is also acceptable because it, it works either way it's just that I feel like that one's just getting closer And there you go. That is the expunge mission on the corrupted version. Extremely easy to do. The threads of night unraveling as if a veil is being lifted. The network is laid bare, its threads converging on. What is this? Mithrax, what's wrong? What do you see? An infestation. I have found the Vex at the source of the Endless Night. Quiria, the Dreaming Mind. Its code has been corrupted by Tinkin Magic. Sabathun. We've been played. Quiria has been commanding the other Vex. Poisoning their minds. Directing them at Sabathun's will. The Endless Night is of Sabathun's design. It would seem the Witch Queen has outmaneuvered us. But perhaps she did not count on us seeing her hand so soon. Damage strike now! Mithrax and I will lead force! We bring the fight to Coria and Kroski! We cannot rush into this. We must find a safe route through the Vex domain where Coria is hiding. Any time we give, it's time for Sabaton to scheme! No scheming, we shoot! I am no saint, but we have to be careful. Mithrax, will you report your findings to the Guardian back at the helm? If that is your wish. We will fight, and soon. But it will be on our terms.
not hers. All right. And for that story development, that leaves a lot to question on what our final confrontation will be near the end of the season. There's about two more Path of the Splicers quests after this one. So let's head on over to the helm and see what Mithax has to say. some odd noise for the loading screen. All right, there you go. If you made it this far in the video, leave a comment down below. Here's a good question. Why haven't they added anything so where we could actually utilize our ships? For right now, they've been cosmetic. Do we ever get to fly them in anything? That would be something that would be interesting to see in this game. You know, maybe a mission or something where you have to fly the ship through maybe the reef or something. Think about it. It's honestly a good question, right? Alright, now, with that, you just need to have to pick up the, um, this portion of the quest, which is the Corrupted Access. It allows you access to these, um, Corrupted Conflux chests at the end of the Expunge missions, which, from what it looks like, it's just bonus chest material. But if you open up three of them, you actually get a pinnacle drop from the Expunge mission. So, there's another pinnacle activity for those who want to catch up in light level. I'm going to go ahead and just buy a couple of these. So, you know, the upgrades, they get to a certain point, not as useful as they were, like with the um, Helms upgrades were when you needed those. So, we got to go ahead to Ikoria, so we got to click on the courtyard. And then when you're done with probably seeing Ikoria, you're probably going to have to go back to the Helm again. You know, just one destination to the other. Too bad there's no better way than just click on the destination and go to that. I mean, couldn't we have just spoken to Icor over a computer or something? That would have been easier. Or she'd been in the room with us. Said we have to travel to the tower. <laughs> That's hilarious. Brilliant design as always.
Head it over onto Ikora. Go past Banshee. Jump down the stairs over here. Don't break a leg, because, you know, everyone has. I have not killed my character somehow jumping off that before. No, I've had my character die from falling down the stairs. <laughs> now that's hilarious. Guardian, be vigilant. We must consider our discovery of Savathun to be part of her plan. Perhaps she means to sow fear and suspicion among I won't allow her to drive us apart. When the time comes, I'll put a spear of light through the Witch Queen's heart myself. For now, I'm overturning all hidden records and full archival access to Osiris, but no one else. Lakshmi claims the Vanguard suffers from a lack of transparency. If she had access to our records, she'd cherry-pick whatever details were necessary to ground her prophecy. I need people I can trust to be objective. Some of our records on Savathun are fabricated truths, I'm sure. But in those lies are the strategies she used to topple the Dream City. History won't be repeating itself here. Continue your slicer training with Mithrax. Use it to root Savathun's minions out. We'll reassess the situation when we've located our target. All right, I have to go visiting Ikora for a very brief conversation. Just pick up that, like, click A, and then head on to over to the Splicer server to listen to Mithax once more. And, of course, you got to travel back to where you were. You know what, I actually want to ask one last question. Each of these seasons, we've had different class items come out through each law sector. So think about this. If we start out with a helmet, then the arms, then the chest, and then the legs, I think it's possible we'll get exotic class items again, since there's only one more season left. And that will cover the entire list of armor in order from top to bottom. Who knows? I would like an exotic class item again, where you can wear that with another class of, or exotic armor piece. That was something I missed from D1. And since we have future war cult going around, does it seem that we're going to have faction stuff again? Kind of makes you think about it. Because um, future war cult leader is quite involved in this season. You see Dead Orbit's leader still in the hangar and the other two are missing, so who knows? Cool, we're weapons. That's an interesting way to view the Guardians. Alright, so as you saw when we were walking up to the servitor, there is a communications at the transmitter. So let's go check that out real quick. And we'll wrap up the video. People of the last city, 
Oh, look who it is. I come to you with an emergency announcement. One of Vanguard leadership wishes to keep from you. Future war calls has heard from Guardian sources that the endless night is the work of the Hive God of Deceit. Summon them. This is a grave development, but we cannot give in to despair. Instead, let it propel us to action. We must demand accountability from Vanguard leadership. We cannot allow Zobala and I Corlorin to sell our city to the fallen. Why? I will not stand by while this hateful rhetoric goes unchallenged. I understand it's hard to put the violence of the past behind us. But the Vanguard's responsibility is to preserve a just peace. Not for some, but for all. Lakshmi would have you live in fear. Fear of the elixir. Fear of the future. But I propose something much stronger. Faith. Faith that bravery is not just a team quality. Faith that we are stronger together. Faith that the Vanguard and our Elixni allies will break the Vex hold on our city. And we'll do it united as one for the good of all. That's pretty good. Alright. I hope y'all enjoyed all the story and dialogue from this week's episode. I would like to thank everyone who did watch all the way through. And if you just skip some parts of the video just to hear listen to the dialogue. That's one of the main purposes of these weekly videos. To cover the story, the weekly Path of the Spi Splicer. That while not having to... I guess if you don't have the season pass you can enjoy the story from a gamer's perspective. Without having to read the lore or take on such a long time to do so. So thank you once again for watching the video. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. Especially leave a comment if you dislike the video. I would like to know what I can do to improve the videos for all of you. There's also a Discord link down below. If you want to join our Discord, you can talk to us. You can also criticize our videos and <laughs> explain, hey, try doing this or that. 